Thanks for hanging out, folks. Thanks for waiting for me. Appreciate it. We are in the, the fifth color here. We are in the fifth and final color, and then there's also colorless and um, gold cards and lands and all that. So I'll probably do one more break after we're done with green, and then uh, and then hammer the rest out. All is one. Hey, you little queen among bears to mana for a two two. Put two when another bear enters the battlefield under your control. Choose one. So it's another bear. It doesn't get its own trigger, obviously. It'd be a two mana four four and be a little strong. But you choose one, get two one one counters on a bear, or a bear you control fights target creature you do not control. So I don't know. I mean, the card's sweet. <laughs> it's definitely a sweet ability and sweet art and everything. Her Majesty. The, uh, uh, I'm not sure how many modern playable bears there are, or if, like, bear tribal is even, like, quasi on the, on this on the, the right spectrum. You could go two-drop Queen Among Bears into three-drop Ayla's Influence and just dump a fucking, <laughs> just, like, a pile of, a pile of bears into play and grow the queen and murder the opponent's board and, and all of that and just play Loam. Just play like mono green, mono green loam with like just those three cards. It's four of each of them. Some other shit. Some noble hierarchs or something. Oh god, that sounds so trashy. But you could definitely win a match or two of modern that way. Yeah, bear loam exactly. Hey, Celine Dijon, thanks for the resub, thanks for the two months. Um, and then influence. A little bit better of a win con than seismic assault, unless you're with seismic if you were killing them that turn. I mean, having a 2-2 is usually better than shocking somebody. I'm going to play that deck. I might play that deck. <laughs> I might figure something out. Bellwing Elk, 4 mana for 4-2. As long as you had another creature into the battlefield under your control this turn. has Trample and Indestructible. That's a pretty zesty attacker. Not great, just filler, you know, but... Collector Oaf, 2 mana for a 2-2. Activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated, so it's a, it's a null rod on a 2-2 body. Not amazing. Probably not good enough. Can be tutored for, so maybe some decks will want it. Cord decks, probably not, but maybe. Can Coco into it? Yeah, can Coco into it, can Cord into it, can Fauna Shaman for it. I guess, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess it's gonna see modern play, right? Like it's, um. Like, it's a Stony Silence that you can tutor for. It's probably better than grabbing, like, a Rex Sage or some some awful fucking card. It can also be Gal Blasted, though, right? Like, whatever whatever the Affinity's oh, sideboard yeah. plan is for your shitty pile of green creatures, you will answer this card. Hey, Steam Flogger Boss, thanks for the resub. Thanks for the 17 months. But the effect is great. Kind of form five mana for a four four trample. Obviously, it's just a uh, two mana two two most of the time in limited. But every once in a while, it'll matter. Five mana for a four four trample. Four mana gets plus x plus x, where x is the number of snow permanents you control. So zesty body pumps the. Uh, it'll always get at least plus one plus one because it is in fact a snow creature in and of itself, and it could get a whole lot more than that. Not a constructed card, um, but uh, potentially a fairly early pick up pick up for uh, for limited. You can hear my voice is kind of going. Crashing footfalls. To spend four one green, create two 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 four four green rhino creature tro- tokens with trample. So in limited, getting two four fours is a whole lot better than drawing three cards. Because uh, I'm comparing the ancestral visions, right? That one also has a spend four, or is that a spend three? Let me check real quick. I've cast this card before, I swear. Yeah, it's a spend four. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's the uh, Lotus that has a spend three. Anyway, so in, in limited, you would much, much rather have two four fours, and it's uh, probably a pretty strong card. If you ever suspend this on turn one in limited, your opponent's just like shitting their pants, figuring how to figuring out how to get ahead, how to get a five five and play on time, you know, something like that. In constructed, I mean, still eight power, still eight power. Suspend cards get a whole lot better with like time walk effects, but I don't think this is the sort of effect you want in taking turns, right? Electro dominance into this, yeah, just a little too uh, what's the word? Inconsistent, right? You're spending two cards, it's a two card combo, and then the cards like aren't that great by themselves. 
Can you proliferate opponents to spend cards? I don't think so. I think proliferate is only stuff that's in playing. Played in rug waterfalls in Legacy. Oh, cascade into it. Oh, that's zesty. Oh, that's zesty. Play this and Ancestor Vision. Oh man, now I kind of wish we had Shardless Agent. Or or I'm kind of glad we don't have Shardless Agent. <laughs> All right, Deep, Deep Forest Hermit. Five mana for a 1-1. One, one. Vanishing three, you get four squirrels. Squirrels you get control, get plus one, plus one. So a upgraded deranged tournament with some very colorful art. A lot of people are excited about it. I don't know. I don't know what I would do with this in modern, but it is a card that exists. <laughs> Obviously a limited bomb, just fucking nuts and limited. It's good in cube. It's good in fucking limited, right? Elvish Fury, one green, buyback. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Again, probably like fine, like fillerish and limited. Excavating and you rid. Five mana for a four four. When it enters the battlefield, you may sack a land. If you do draw a card. Threshold. As long as seven or more cards are in your graveyard, it gets plus one plus one and has vigilance. Meh. Meh, you heard me. It's filler. It's fine. Force of vigor. I mean there's there are cards that like care about you having a land in your graveyard in the format and it does turn them on, but it takes until turn five to do so. Does help you get towards its own threshold though. That's kind of cool. Force of Vigor, five mana instant, or four mana instant, I'm sorry. If it's not your turn, you can pitch cast it, destroy up to two artifacts and or enchantments. Kind of sweet, kind of zesty. Gotta imagine that card's gonna see a lot of play, right? Force of Naturalize, yeah, exactly. Obviously, it's a sideboard card and limited. I mean, it's a sideboard card and constructed too, but don't, don't main deck this. There's not enough artifacts and enchantments in this format to main deck this, and limited is what I'm getting at. Frostwalla, three mana for a 2 2. Pumps. Plus 2 plus 2. Activated only once each turn. Main deck and vintage. Yeah, I guess. I guess. It is a cute little lizard. That's true. But filler. You know, filler's filler. Genesis. Uh, Genesis in some limited formats is a bomb. I'm not sure how slow this limited format is. There's like some playable 1 mana 1 1s and evasive creatures and go wide strats. So I don't I don't know how if this format's slow enough, but maybe it will be. It's a uh, it's too slow for legacy, so it's probably too slow for modern. Glacial Revelation, 3 mana, reveal the top 6 cards of your library. Put any number of snow permanent cards from among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, that's super cool. Hard to make this work in limited, but if you've got a bunch of like payoff cards, like cards that like grow for the number of snow permanents you have or whatever then even just hitting a couple of them could be really important could be a really important piece of the engine <laughs> glacial revelation puts genesis in the graveyard yeah i guess i guess hex drinker you're saying hex drinker is disgusting and limited i think hex drinker drinker um might be good enough for constructed yeah obviously it's not in limited but um so, one mana for a 2-1, like Savannah Lions, like by itself wouldn't be good enough. Uh, you put three more mana into it, it's a 4-4. With protection from instants. So it's a 4-4 that's like kind of hard to answer. And then um, the level 8 is a 6-6 with pro everything. Pro everything is a lot of things. It's a lot of things to have protection from. Yeah, maybe it ends up like not being quite good enough. Similar to uh, Fleece Main Lion, right? Where like... If you, if you level it up fully, the Fleece Main Line, if you get the five mana for it or whatever, it's like hard for your opponent to answer. Shit, it's like pretty strong, even in modern. But like actually getting getting it there is hard. I just think at level three, that's only three mana. It's a pretty big jump up to have a four four. Mr. Ratatat, thanks for the resub. Thanks for 24 months. So you'd have to be playing some kind of green stompy deck. But if you were, you'd probably want this card. Four mana, yeah, but it's not it's not four mana, it's four mana split up. So the the four mana to level this thing up is is uh is less than like just like one single four mana activation, right? Cause you could be sitting there on like two or three mana and eventually get this to a six six. Fleece could be blocked. Yeah, I mean it, eight's also a lot. Eight's, eight's also a lot more. I guess it's not that much more than five if you're splitting it up, but Two turns to get it to a 6-6 six, six if you have four mana. 
Seven versus nine. Oh yeah, if you're counting a total, including the casting cost. This can get wiped. That's true. That's true. I don't know how many damnations there are though. Terminus gets both of them. Progenitus is pretty damn good, even as a six six. I agree. That's why that's why that's why I was considering it, right? That's why I'm like talking about the card. This progenitus is pretty damn good, even as a six six. Um, and this is like way easier to get into play than progenitus is. But you do have to care about the the origins. I mean, I have I have played some green stompy decks in modern before. They would have loved this card. So maybe. Fucking maybe, right? I'm not saying this card's gonna destroy modern. I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say anything like that, right? It is a creature. It does uh it is does start with a pretty fragile body. But at no spot in the uh in the leveling does it look like a bad card at all to me. I could certainly see murdering people with it. <laughs> Crossing and Tusker, zesty reprint. Probably not gonna be constructed playable unless uh unless slide was a thing, but we all know that's not gonna be a thing. Land of War Tribe, sweet limited card. I'd pick this card early. Would I play it in Constructed? I would not. Mother Bear, two minutes for a 2-2. Two -two. This will help us with our Bear Tribal deck. Exile Mother Bear from your graveyard, get two 2-2s. Two Actually, it's pretty sweet with the uh, with the Queen, right? Let's get a bunch of Bear Triggers. Popper playable, maybe. Behemoth, six minutes for a 5-5. Five -five. Trample, gets plus three, plus three, as long as they're a land card in your graveyard. Yeah, an 8-8 eight -eight Trampler is a pretty big difference from a 5-5 five -five Trampler. Gotta say. Will I be playing Bear Tribal? I'll probably try and make Bear Tribal work at some point. We'll see. <laughs> Cultivator, four mana for a 2-2. When it enters the battlefield, we can discard any, any number of land cards, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on it, and draw that many cards. Yeah, I've played this card. Uh, I used to play this card in Kitchen Table Magic way back in the day, and it was not very good. <laughs> but it's kind of fun. There are, there are like, I mean, it is sitting here right next to a Land Matters cards, and there's, like, threshold stuff going on, and whatnot so you can play it sometimes just don't expect it to be like consistently good and a card that makes every one of your decks and all of that stuff it, it, it really makes it um like you want to like sandbag it so like you, you maximize the trigger right so then you start sandbagging the cultivator and the land drop and on top of your land drop and then you're like is two lands enough my opponent's like getting ahead of me do i finally like play it now and there's like this this kind of feel bad tension and you like finally do play it and you just like draw two more lands anyway. It's, like <laughs> um, it's not card advantage, right? It's just filtering. Nimble Mongoose, one mana for one one. Shroud is plus two plus two as long as you have seven or more cards in your graveyard. So I have a few invitational top eights with Nimble Mongoose as well as a Grand Prix, Grand Prix top eight. A lot of people are like, how can Nimble Mongoose see play in modern? My answer has been it can't. <laughs> it's just not good enough. There's no days in this format. There's no wasteland. Um, but maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Maybe there's a version of... Uh, of um, What's that fucking 1 mana 13, 13 called? I'm so bad with names. I just like space out constantly. Hmm. Death Shadow. That's the card. It, there's, a, there's probably some version of Death Shadow that wants to play this. There might be some fucking like, Thought Scour deck that wants to play this. The, the trick to Nimble Mongoose is that it's only really good if the Shroud can carry games on its own. Like, just hard carry. Like, Nimble Mongoose, Nimble Mongoose, dead you. And your opponent stares at a pile of, disc of, of removal. If removal isn't that common, Nimble Mongoose is terrible. It's a terrible card. You're getting terrible stats if your Mongoose is jamming into other creatures. And there's a decent amount of creatures in Modern, Right? The humans decks are just like playing like a pile of giant creatures. The um, the fucking uh, affinity decks are like making giant ballistas and murdering you by turn three. And this card does not line up stats wise in that environment. But like I said, if people are just sitting there what staring up? at a bunch of removal, you can certainly murder them with some nimbles. Hey, son of a bad badaya, thanks for the resub, makes the eight months. Yeah, so, so as I said, this is probably not the metagame for this card. Could this card hypothetically see play in some other like drastically different modern metagame? Maybe. <laughs> I'll let you know. If that metagame ever shows up, I'll be like, oh shit, I bet Nimble Mongoose is good right now. But uh, it's not right now. Regrowth is cool. It's cool to have this one in modern. Neat little combo card. 
sweet with Manamorphos, right? And uh, Freck, the um, the one in the red uh, enchantment, where you level it up, your your spells start doubling. Get some neat little loops there. I mean, I've played three mana regrowth. <laughs> I've played three mana regrowth in that deck, so two mana regrowth is like kind of exciting for some combo decks. Yeah, Pyromancer's Ascension. Pyromancer's Ascension, Manamorphose, Regrowth. Do all kinds of shit. Rhyme Tender. Two mana, two two. Untap a snow permanent. So if you have a creature, you can give it Vigilance with Rhyme Tender. If you have a land, you can use it as a mana dork. Kind of versatile for limited play. Will it be a constructed card? No. Settled Rhyme Stag. Two mana for two two. Gets plus two plus two. As long as you had another creature into the battlefield under your control this turn. Kind of aggressive. Kind of aggressive for a green two drop in limited. Um, is this good? Maybe, maybe. Is attacking as a 4-4 a lot of the time if you just want to curve out creatures. Savage Swipe. One green sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus two plus two. Until end of turn, if its power is two, <laughs> then it fights target creature you don't control. Wait, so it, it's the power has to be two? You literally have to be pumping a bear for this swipe card? I mean, there's a lot of bears in this format, but that's hilarious. I love this. Is it good? No, this is fucking terrible, but yeah, that's sweet. Scale up. One green. It still fights. Okay, so it's a prey upon that gets pumped sometimes. Yeah, it's I'm still not excited about that. I'm I'm a little bit less up on prey upon than most people. Uh and I mean that card has gotten like pretty outscaled in terms of the fight cards they've been printing recently. But uh it is it is it is better than I thought in limited, if it, if it always fights. Still not like amazing, but you know, if you have some bears, it's probably worth it. Scale up green <laughs> until end of turn. Target creature control becomes a green worm with base power and toughness six four overload. So I saw some people like uh, like freaking out because of uh, infect in modern, and this just makes it like you, before um, in order to kill someone on turn two with infect, it was like a like a three card combo on top of untapping with your creature. You'd have to go like pump spell, pump spell, and then a uh, mutagenic on top of that. Whereas this one is just two pump spells. You just play this, and then a, then a plus uh, four plus X pump spell on top of that. And so it's hypothetically um, makes your ability to kill on turn two much much stronger. The rebuttal I saw to that is when your opponent's fucking untapping with their their infect creature. What was your win rate anyway? <laughs> if you let them untap with their creature, like how many games are you winning? When in that particular situation, what? A, like what 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 EV are you actually losing here? Probably not actually that much. Anyway, kind of a cute little card. This is a sorcery too. Spore frog, one mana, one one. Zack Spore frog, fog. It's only one more power than Groundswell slash Crosa. Yeah, but I mean that matters, right? That's the difference between having needing an entire another pump spell. That's what, that's why it matters. Like this plus Groundswell and Crosa is ten damage. Groundswell and Crosa plus Groundswell and Crosa is nine damage, and uh, one of those kills your opponent with Infect. Yeah, it's certainly worth talking about Thunder Family. I'm here talking. I'm talking about it with you. It's certainly it's certainly a relevant consideration, but uh, but I don't think Infect is about to like come back and like dominate the the format or whatever. Like people are like really worried about turn two kills because this card exists, and uh, I don't know. Frog Frog will see play. Will it? Will it see play in uh, in modern? What deck's gonna play this card? More viable? Yeah, right. I mean, right right now, in fact, like like borderline un unplayable. Right, like it just doesn't see a ton of play. Maybe it's underplayed, but Res is like not seeing a play, a lot of play, and some people will come back and like play it, and it's certainly a little bit more viable because it exists. And yeah, no, I think we're on the same page there. Frog Tribal. <laughs> Spore Frog makes Genesis seem a lot better in Limited. Well, Genesis is always good in Limited. Just rebuying creatures is like a good thing to be doing in Limited. It is cute that there is like an infinite fog with it, but uh, yeah. It goes in walls. <laughs> Frogs of War. Modern does have a white version of Spore Frog. And that white version of Spore Frog sees play in um, in that shitty... Martyr deck, Martyr Proc. But that deck, I mean, Proclamation of Rebirth is like a very specific card in that it's white. 
<laughs> so I don't I don't know what, what what green deck would want this, right? It'd have to be a green green deck. To care, to care about the difference. Spring Bloom Druid. Three mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you may sack a land. If you do, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, and shuffle your library. Okay, so it's like a it's like a shitty harrow. Right? You sack a land, and then you get two basic land cards, and they go into play tapped. Because Harrow, the lands would be untapped. And that would that would interest me a little bit more. That would... Is Harrow modern legal? Is that a fetches snows? Yeah, I guess. Oh, that's true. With Harrow, you have to pay. Uh, you have to sack as part of the cost. Whereas this one, you're only sacking if it's already entered play. If it's already been, if it already hasn't been countered. That's a that's a that's a reasonable pro versus con. Harrow's in Zendikar. Oh yeah, fair enough. Harrow was Harrow was really good in Zendikar. I actually remember that. That wasn't its first printing, though. At least. All right, Squirrel Nest. One green green. Enchant land. Taps. Create a 1-1 one, one Squirrel creature token. Yeah, that card... <clears throat> that card was pretty good with Opposition back in the day. Back in the old day. We have a few different ways of untapping it. We got, like, Arbor Elves and Reclamations and stuff. I'm just not sure what a bunch of Squirrels is going to do, right? Squirrel! Dried Arbor? You want to enchant Dried Arbor? <laughs> Nothing could happen here. <laughs> oh shit, what up? Yeah, we just need Earthcraft. Exactly. Hey, Catacrisis. Thanks for the resell. Thanks for the 27 months. Do Intruder Alarm. Yeah, yeah. I can work with any creature land. Maybe ones that are less fragile. A few too many steps. Bank Infinite. Dorks, I think. You could also have a... Uh, if you're using Intruder Alarm, you could also just use Dried Arbor. Like, you wouldn't need to enchant a creature land. You could use Dried Arbor or the two mana one two that untaps at any land. Oh shit. Untap what the up? squirrel nest thing. Then untap untapped land, then the, the one one would untap the dried arbor again. Oh, it's starting shit, to seem a little up? bit more reasonable. I think you need to do something with the one ones though. You can't just make a infinite one ones and hope it's good enough. That sounds delicious, Hodge. Yeah, Kiora's follower. I was talking about the 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 one in the green one too. That's all play in devotion and standard though. But but yeah, follower would also do it. Hey Uchiha, thirty seven. Thanks for the resell. Thanks for seventeen months. Uchiha says, "Guess it's that time of the month to give Caleb more money. I will oblige and fork it over. <laughs> Those tasty, tasty money forks." All right, tempered sliver, three mana, two two. Sliver creatures you control have when this creature deals combat damage to a player. Put a one one counter on it. Interesting. Yeah, again, uh, three mana is like real rough and constructed. And in limited, you're going to play pretty much all your slivers. Do you first pick this one? Probably not. Unless you're like looking to force slivers. It's not like a like a sliver bomb, right? It's not like one of the rare ones. That's fine. A little inoffensive card. Thornado, three mana. Destroy a creature with flying, with cycling. Nice, I love that. I really love uh, versatile cards that pop flyers. Because I hate just losing to some fucking... Sarah Angel, well, I like, can't draw an answer or whatever. And I also hate having to main deck your fucking answer to flyers, and then your opponent's just like playing like mono red shitters and just murder you while you stare at this dead card in your hand. So that's kind of a sweet effect for limited. Tree Folk Umbra, three mana enchant creature. Creature gets O plus O plus O plus two and assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. And there's totem armor here. Well, that's neat. That's a neat little set of abilities. So it's kind of like if it's giving uh, plus two plus two because of the switcheroo there, and then depending on and assuming you're gonna enchant a creature that's higher power, higher uh, higher toughness than power, you're probably gonna be like pretty zesty actually. This cube on the potential agenda, yeah maybe. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up right now and see see how I feel. I've done it both ways. I've like uh, had days that were like just set reviews, and I've also like done set review and like gone into other stuff. I'm gonna try and do this as fast as possible. The less, uh, the, the less questions about whether I'm Cuban. Nah, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna harangue you. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna harangue you like a fucking, uh, fucking. Uh, what's the word? Like a babysitter or a, um, a substitute teacher. This will all move faster if you stop asking irrelevant questions. Ah! <laughs> anyway, treetop ambusher. Two mana for two one with dash. Interesting. Have that on a green creature. Whenever it attacks, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So it can pump itself, right? Pump it up to a 3-2. 
not excited about this card, but it's a card that exists. It's like fine filler, I guess. Trumpeting Herd, four mana, create a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature token with rebound. If you cast it from your hand, exile it as res resolves, but you're going to stop keep. You can cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. That's actually a, like a pretty fucking strong limited card, right? Four mana for two three threes, even if it is split up over two turns. Yeah, that looks really good to me. Wood Elephant again. Yeah. An Elephant Never Forgives. Ooh, that is good flavor. I fucking love that. I I wish with that flavor text there was like more blood on their on their uh, tusks, but you know, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. There's some good anger in those fucking elephant eyes. Twin silk spider, three minute for one to reach. When it enters the battlefield, make a copy of it. It's a dece. A dece little dece little limited card. Yeah, sweet. Reminds me of a reminds me of like a billion different Hearthstone cards, right? Unbound flourishing, three mana. Whenever you, cast you, whenever you cast a permanent spell with a mana cost that contains X, double the value of X. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell or activate an ability, if that spell's mana cost or that ability's activation cost contain X, copy that spell or ability. You may choose new targets for that copy. All right, so everybody that understands exactly what Unbound Flourishing does for me, just like reading it off real fast, um, can you tell me what it does now? Because <laughs> this art is sweet. The art's like really cool. I love that. Um, the... The abilities do so much. There's like so so much text there that that you gotta be like. This is the sort of card where you'd like sit there and just be like, man, there's gotta be a way that this is busted somehow. And you just like look through like all of the cards of all of Magic and try and find something. It makes ballistas dank. So you uh, double your your uh, your walkers and uh, and ballistas and whatever. It's kind of cool. The broken cast is copying activated abilities. Playing endless ones. Endless ones are more endless. They're twice as endless as they as they used to be. <laughs> multi kicker chalice. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the multi kicker chalice actually then would like amp up the the blistas that you're trying to play if you're if you're going for that. Hydroid crisis. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. Mm. Well, anyway, we'll move on. We'll move along here. I'm going to put a big old question mark over this card because I have no fucking idea. Wall of Blossoms. Card sweet. Uh, I have played many Wall of Omens in Modern, and hopefully I will have a use for this card ever because it's sweet. Um, oh, fucking... Uh, uh, Hoogland's been playing, like, Naya Chord with Wall of Omens in it. I bet that deck... I mean, if you're playing four Wall of Omens in your in your green cord deck, you're probably either switching over to Wall of Blossoms or you're playing some number of both, and just deciding that you want to play eight walls. That's probably that's probably good, probably good for that specifically. Yeah, love me to love me to resto blink a wall. That's for sure. Get that value. He said it was an improvement over Wall of Omens. Yeah, yeah, right. So basically the same shit I just said. Cool to have validation there. But I think I think that's that's about all that I see it like fitting into currently, right? Maybe like Vanifard X that aren't playing white could play this. Whereas they wouldn't have Wall of Omens as a as an option. Weather the storm. One in the green, you gain three life storm. Yeah, someone was talking about uh and it's an instant. Someone was talking about how like the splice onto instant and sorcery cards work with storm. Like you get to like get the copy effect. So I think if you played this like you're you're like you pass the turn right, and your opponent plays a couple of cards, even if they just play one card, and then they're generating storm for you, and you play this on their end of turn, and then you splice on the either the draw card or the, like to make a three three, like all of a sudden you're like making two three threes and gaining six life, and then you untap and you like cast the card that you spliced or whatever. That's I, I think that starts to get pretty decent. It's like a real thing that could happen. Would this be good enough in the Reclamation decks in Modern? Fuck, probably. I've played some really bad life gain cards in those Reclamation decks in Modern. And whether the Storm could actually, like, you know, do good things. Work. I'm not I, I'm not talking about splicing in Modern, obviously, right? I'm not talking about splicing onto instants, but whether the Storm itself as a uh, as a tutor target 
Could be really good. Could gain you a whole shitload of life. Great against burn and storm. I don't I don't know that it's great against storm. <laughs> I think if your your opponent can storm kill you, a lot of the times they can kill you through weather the storm. Like you cast this and you get a bunch of life, and it's like more life than the grape shot was gonna do you, and they're like, okay, well I guess I have to find my other grape shot. Play it, flash it back, whatever. I think usually you want to stop your storm opponent from comboing off in the first place, if that's a if that's a possibility. <laughs> the storm players in the chat are like, please board this in. Please please play life gain against me. <laughs> so the name's bullshit. Oh the name's whether the storm. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, the name is the name is false. Don't listen to the name. What we ever changeling? Five mana for a three five. Changeling reach. Nice. This is a sick spider already. This is a spider that's also a fucking coward. <laughs> fucking coward spider. When it enters the battlefield, if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, you gain five life. Oh, nice. That's a sweet ability, too. Yeah. Again, not uh, constructed playable, but shit, right? Shit, what up? Hey, Aelin Doll. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 14 months. Winding Way. People have been calling this Mulch Plus. It's a one in the green. You choose a creature or land, reveal the top four. Put all cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand, the rest in your graveyard. That's sweet. Like in in a uh, in because like whatever you're missing, right? Like if you're starting the game out and need to hit land drops, you're like, yeah, name land. And then if you're later in the game, need threats, you're like, yeah, name creature. Mm. Does this card see play in I think this card might actually see play in the uh, the uh, the four black black four four. What's that fucking card called? Because that deck almost wants to play Mulch. Yeah, Soul Flare. That Soul Flare deck almost wants to play Mulch. And this is a card where if you're missing Soul Flare, you can, like, find Soul Flare instead. You feel this replaces Lead the Stampede. I mean, you're looking at one less card, but maybe... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it replaces Lead the Stampede. I think you'd rather pay the extra mana to look at another card. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Anyway, Barrel Tree Folk. Four mana XX trample power and toughness are equal to the number of snow permanents you control. When there's a battlefield tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature does not untap during its controller's next untaps. Oh, I was gonna take a break. I was gonna take a break when I got done with green. I am gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a break since, since I'm done with green. I'm gonna run a quick commercial, and then when I come back, uh, I'm gonna have refreshed my water. I'm gonna have taken a snack. And I'm gonna hammer out everything else. We're gonna hammer out the gold cards, the lands, and the artifacts, and that'll be that'll be it. That'll be the end of the the, the review. Thank you.